I'm not sure why Christians stopped celebrating that and allowed a darker version to take its place. For us today, for many of us, it's really a time where our kids dress up. It's fun to put on a fun outfit. It's an opportunity to be generous with your neighbors. And we like to have fun around here too. It's a time to maybe even talk to your neighbors for the very first time. But for us, it's a great opportunity to point people to Jesus, the one true savior and king. It's our way of using something that has the attention of the world to point people to Jesus the same way that the Apostle Paul did it in Acts 17. Why? Because the spiritual world is real. And we should talk about it. Second thing is the afterlife is real. Samuel comes back in a spirit form of sorts. And there's a lot of debate about what type of form. But he's alive and he has, he's connected to his life here on earth. But he's still very much a part of of God's world. The same is true for you and me. There is more to us than right here. Are you thinking about that? Or are you just focused on your earthly life? I mean, Jesus taught it this way. He says, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is there anything worth more than your soul? Your eternal being, it matters. It probably matters more than all that you accomplish in your earthly life. Your earthly life matters too. You're putting your on purpose for a purpose. You're not an accident. So you can either try to sort out the afterlife on your own, on your own terms, or you can start to trust the one who predicted his own death, burial, and resurrection and pulled it off. And the afterlife is real. And the truth is you never know when your time here on earth will be done. You may be saying to yourself, well, I can fix it. I can MacGyver my way out of this anytime. Go ahead. I think what this story reminds us is that, man, there is an afterlife to pay attention to. And the reason that that's important is because the consequences are real, too. The choices that you make, they have an impact. I know you think about that. I imagine some of you are experiencing some of the weight of the choices that you've made. But it's true. You and I, the choices that we make, have an impact not just on this life, but on the life to come. Here's one verse of many that reminds us of this. The wages of sin is death. The paycheck of sin, the payoff of sin, the result of of doing life on our own terms is what? It's death. It's death. And it's not just talking about a physical death. Spiritual death. You know this to be true. If you showed up at work doing exactly what you felt like doing or showed up in your relationship following every impulse and every desire that comes along, if you follow the natural desires of your heart, it'll ruin your career. It'll ruin your relationship. Why? Because sometimes there's some dark stuff in that heart of ours. The truth is it'll impact your eternity too. That's scary. I know. Perhaps you've never thought about it that way before. It's a lot to take in. It can feel a little scary and heavy, but that's not all the verse says. It says that there is a free gift of God that is life, eternal life, through not a list of rules, through not going to church all the time and reading your Bible, through Christ Jesus our Lord. So you can either try to do life on your own terms, or you can trust God's path and experience the gift of life that he intended for you. See, God saw your mess and mine. He saw the consequences. And he sent Jesus to die for us so that when we trust him, we can find hope and begin to experience freedom. We can begin a life-changing adventure with him, discovering that we're not an accident, that we have purpose. We can be a part of his family and his story. In fact, it's God's desire that you and I, that we would be filled with joy, always thanking the Father, because he has enabled us to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people, people who live in the light. God wants you to experience joy and belonging and, and a part of his overall story. How, do we, how are we able to experience that? Well, God has rescued us from our kingdom of darkness, whatever that kingdom looks like for you. And he's transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. He's moved us from fighting this battle on our own to being a part of his movement, his unstoppable movement of his people. How? Because his son purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So do you see what Jesus did for us? Do you trust what Jesus has done for us? What he's done for you? He's 
He's extended an invitation for you to find hope and freedom. And I know some of you are saying, man, you don't know me. You don't know what I was doing last night, last month, last year, my whole life. This story doesn't apply to me. I'm not a church person. What? Read on. Because it says in this ancient text, this includes you. As if God knew you were going to be here today. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. He's including you. Even though you may have been full of like, I'm not interested in God. And the truth is, we're all like Saul. We all have moments where we're like, no, God, I'm going to do it my own way. And yet God graciously pursues you and me and invites us to trust what Jesus accomplished. His life, death, burial, and resurrection to give us hope. How does he give us hope? He goes on to say he has reconciled you to himself. God has brought you back to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. And because of what Christ accomplished, as a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. I don't know what you brought in with you today, but I've been around humans enough to know. I've heard your stories and I know my own story that some of you feel like all you have is a bunch of faults that you're carrying around and you're trying to hide. Feel like you are to blame for so many things. Or maybe maybe you think everybody else is to blame. It's like you've been trying to do life on your own. Today I want to invite you to stop trying and start trusting. Open yourself up to God. So instead of doing desperate things, just humbly say, God, I'm, I want to follow what you have for me. I believe when you do, you begin to experience his joy and his peace in your life. I know some of you, you're probably not ready for that today, and that's great. I'm glad you're here. But maybe you could just stay curious. And join us for At The Movies over the next four weeks, a fun series where we take these incredible stories and the Bible, and we go, God, is there something that this reveals that we need to be paying attention to? Christmas is a fun time around here. January, I mean, the next three months, just lean in with us and stay curious to see if you begin to experience the truths about God in a fresh way. I imagine there are some of you, you are like, I, I want to begin. Where do I start? Where do I be? How do I start following God? Or I'll walk you through a simple prayer of faith in just a minute. You know, I know there are many of you who follow Jesus. You're a Christian, but sometimes we're prone to wander, prone to leave the Lord we know. If that's you, you've started opening your life up to things that aren't going to give life back. Maybe this is God's gentle way to call you back to him. So what I would invite you to do is just take a prayerful moment, close your eyes and go, God, what is Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me today? What step do you have for me to take? Would you ask that dangerous, simple prayer right now? If you've never surrendered your life to him, maybe you feel like today is the day where you want to begin that that purposeful adventure with him, then just tell him in the quietness of your heart, just say, God, today, in the quietness of your heart, I want to follow you. I'm done trying to do life on my own terms. Today, I acknowledge that Jesus purchased my freedom and forgiveness through his death, burial, and resurrection. And I want to make you the leader of my life from this day forward. Whatever it is that you have for me, I trust. I want to follow you from this day forward. Pray that in Jesus' name. God, I'm thankful for those who took their first step of faith today. May they begin to experience the power, joy, and peace of your spirit. Give them the courage to tell someone that they're with, that they started that journey. And God, for those who are curious, God, I pray that you would just give them the ability to see you with fresh perspective, unlike any other time in their life. Make your presence undeniable to them. And God, for all of us, would you remind us yet again of your incredible grace that saved a wretch like me, where we were once lost, we were caught up in darkness, but now we're found, we are with you, we can see the truth. Would you help us see that, remind us of that today? We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks. Well, here at Cedar Creek, we love to join together as a community in worship. So I would love if you would stand as we prepare to sing. And it's okay if you're not comfortable singing quite yet, but if at some point during the song you feel inclined or comfortable to, feel free to join in.
Yeah. <laughs>